a very good evening and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Boulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued eight decrees for the year 2019. Decree number one, reorganizing the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. Decree number two, appointed Hamad Faisal Al Malki as Under Secretary at the Ministry of the National Economy. Decree number three, reorganizing the Real Estate Regularity Authority. Decree number four, appointing Sheikh Fahd bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa as Director General at the Office of the First Deputy Premier with the rank of Under Secretary of the Ministry. Decree number five appointed Muhammad Ali Bahzad as Director General for Tenders with the rank of Under Secretary of the Ministry. Decree number six appointed Walid Abdelaziz Abdul Wahab Sabah as Director General for Clearance and Customs Services at the Ministry of Interior. Decree number seven appointed Ahmed Muhammad Abdul Karim Al Manai as Chief Executive for the National Communications Center. Decree number eight specifies the administrative body that assumes the duties and powers prescribed for the Competition Promotion and Protection Authority and who shall assume the functions and powers prescribed for each of the Board of Directors, the Chairman of the Board and the Chief Executive. Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King, the President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, received the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzia Zainal, Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, Vice Chairman, their deputies, and Presidents of the Standing and Qualitative Committees. Her Royal Highness welcomed them and renewed her congratulations to the members of the Council, wishing them further success. She stressed the importance of these periodic meetings to further develop the cooperation with the SC to support various issues of women and family. She underlined the care and support of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to the Bahraini women and family issues. She commended the Legislative Authority for holding this periodic meeting during which it will consult on aspects of cooperation and identify priorities for future work and follow up the inclusion of the National Plan for the Advancement of Bahraini Women in the Government Action Plan. Her Royal Highness noted the role of the Coordination Committee between the SCW and the members of the Legislative Authority and their permanent cooperation in supporting women's issues, stressing the importance of the role of heads of parliament and qualitative committees in the follow-up and adoption of women's issues, and in highlighting Bahrain's experience in the advancement of Bahraini women and their participation in the progress of the country. The Secretary-General of the SCW, Halal Ansari, gave a presentation on the strategic trends for the period of 2019 to 2022, which focuses on continuing to follow the integration of Bahraini women's needs in all comprehensive development programs and the sustainability of national efforts to promote women's progress in family stability and increase their contribution to the national economy. She stressed the need to further advancing the requirements of the national plan for the advancement of Bahraini women in light of the outcomes of the government form. The Speaker of the Representative Council expressed appreciation to Her Royal Highness for her efforts to improve the status of Bahraini women as a partner in the development process in Bahrain. The Chairman of the Shura Council stressed the importance of the role played by Her Royal Highness in support of Bahraini women's issues, promoting them in various fields and enhancing their active participation in the process of development.
In a meeting with the players of Bahrain's national football team in Dubai, the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Izhana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the team performed well in the AFC Asian Cup and its players reflected a positive image of their development. The President of the Bahrain Football Association, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, was also present at the meeting. His Highness told the football players that their participation in the Asian Cup represents one of the team's milestones and that the ongoing development of Bahraini football was reflected in the team's efforts during the competition. He said that despite losing to South Korea, Bahrain's team performance was good and that the focus should now be on future competitions. His Highness expressed full support for the team as it works towards qualifying to World Cup 2022 and expressed confidence in their ability to achieve that objective. PDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa today visited the Royal Bahrain Navy Force where he witnessed one of the stages of Hamad III Joint Military Exercise implemented by Bahrain Defense Force and the Egyptian Armed Forces. The Commander-in-Chief was received upon his arrival by Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr al naimi Egyptian Naval Detachment Commander Major General Yasser Azzat al asi Commander of Royal Bahrain Navy Force Commander Mohammed Yusuf al asam Senior BDF Officers and Participating Egyptian Officers. The BDF Commander-in-Chief's salute was performed before he inspected the participating forces and vessels where he was also briefed about the objectives and stages of the joint military exercise. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa praised the high standards applied in the course of Hamad III Joint Military Exercise, which will achieve maximum benefits by opening various opportunities from the expertise of our brethren regarding war and combat techniques to enrich experiences and develop them to learn the latest developments and modernization in this field to build a strong forces capable of highly efficient performance of assigned duties. The BDF top commander cited the significance of this joint role and its effective role in boosting combat proficiency and operational and tactical capabilities via the exchange of expertise and field skills between the participating forces in the various aspects of combat operations and raise combat readiness to tackle any threats in battlefields. The BDF Commander-in-Chief expressed his pride in what he felt in terms of the cooperation spirit and joint work between the BDF and Egypt Armed Forces demonstrated throughout the various stages of the Naval and Air Forces exercise aimed to boost 
cooperation and coordination and to gain more field expertise to tackle the various challenges. The field marshal explained that the size and level of the participating forces will have a tremendous pivotal role in honoring and the development of combined military work requirements as well as its importance in boosting the military efficiency and advancement of combat readiness in addition to boosting the means of exchanging military expertise with the brotherly forces. The commander-in-chief affirmed that the Bahrain Defense Force is always keen to boost the standard of command and combat as well as training of its affiliates on the basis of latest advanced military techniques and foundations, adding that the BDF attaches a special importance to the joint exercise with Bradley forces. The Bahraini Defense Force and the Egyptian Armed Forces participating in the joint drill showed a high level of skill in carrying out command and combat missions, which reflects the high level of precision and coordination in the joint naval and air forces exercises. This type of exercises enhances readiness to tackle all threats where a number of Bahraini Royal Navy and Egyptian Navy ships and a number of fighter aircrafts of the Royal Air Force and the Egyptian Air Force executed a demonstration in one of the phases of the drill which took place within the above the kingdom's regional waters. The participants approved during the joint drill the level of efficiency in accomplishing tasks and commands according to their training plan to achieve the goals and raise participants' efficiency and readiness. The Hamid III joint drill is part of the Hamid series of exercises which is considered one of the most important joint exercises implemented by Bahrain Defense Force with Egypt's Defense Force which aims to promote the relation connecting the two countries and comes within the framework of defense cooperation and joint coordination between armed forces and the armies of friendly countries. The Parliamentary Committee to Study the Government's Action Program for the years 2019 to 2022 announced that it has completed its mission by agreeing with the government's delegation on all the amendments it made during the four joint meetings held between the two sides over the past two weeks. The committee, which held its last meeting under the chairmanship of the Speaker of the Council, Fawziya Zainal, and attended by Deputy Prime Minister and Head of the Government Delegation, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the second Deputy Speaker of the Council of chairman of the parliamentary committee and MPs confirmed that it is now finalizing the preparation of its report to present the government's program to the council for a final vote in accordance with the constitutional procedures followed in this regard. The consensus reached by both the parliamentary and the government's parties are in many points that preserve the gains of the homeland and enable the citizens who are the center of development and its basic purpose. In the service side, they agreed to provide at least 25,000 new housing units during the next four years according to a timetable for each year by strengthening the partnership with the private sector and expanding the Mazaya program to provide housing services, thus contributing to the increase and diversification of housing solutions for citizens and also agreed on establishing hospitals and government health centers in governorates that need to. The two sides also agreed on retirement and financial affairs and that the government will submit to the legislative authority a number of draft laws aimed at enhancing the sustainability of the pension funds towards current and future generations to ensure their ability to meet the acquired pension rights and benefits in addition to achieving a financial balance between expenditure and government revenues through the implementation of the initiatives of the financial balance program. Upon directives from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, a number of Shore Council members paid a visit to the Ministry of Electricity and Water Affairs to expand means of constructive cooperation and activate joint coordination between the legislative and executive authorities. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdul Hussein bin Ali Mirza, briefed the MPs on the Kingdom's achievements in renewable energy and energy efficiency, in addition to projects implemented in this field. Dr. Mirza also reviewed with the great progress that had been made based on the keen interest of the leadership and the government to encourage the use of clean energy and activate its uses for sustainable energy and a green environment. Dr. Mirza, meanwhile, hailed the sincere efforts exerted by the members of the Legislative Authority in discussing issues affecting the interests of the citizens. He also asserted the effective joint cooperation between the two authorities in achieving the aspirations of citizens and improving the quality and efficiency of these services provided. For their part, 
the Shura Council members lauded the efforts exerted by the ministry that aim at improving the quality of services provided to meet the aspirations of citizens and to ensure comprehensive and sustainable development for future generations. The International Peace Institute of the Middle East and North Africa hosted today a book launch on the occasion of the International Day of Education celebrated by United Nations on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The book was entitled 17 SDGs under IPI MENA's Future Leaders Series Program. The book is authored by the possibly youngest peace writer in the region, 12-year-old Adam Kadia. The event brought together children, parents, school officials and media figures. Adam Kadia, who wrote his first book, Hakim the Adventurer, in 2016, at nine years old, discussed his new book, 17 SDGs, the concepts of dialogue, tolerance, respect and understanding as enshrined in the SDGs among children in the early age of creation and inspiration to demonstrate the importance of children in peace and education as a prerequisite to sustainable development. The book is made, I wrote it just so I can promote the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which are the goals which were addressed by the UN in 2015. The book is about these twins, Salman Sultan, a girl and a boy, who live in Smart Town, a fictional city, where it's not the best town to live in. There's lots of problems and humanitarian crises. So they learn about the 17 SDGs, and the, with the help of these goals, they make the town a way better place and unite everybody all races, everybody in peace. We are very proud uh, at uh, GPIC to be uh, part of this important event, uh, I believe, for the young generation. Uh, today we have a young youngster who has done uh, extremely well in uh, transferring his thoughts into books and sharing uh, this knowledge with uh, children of the world and uh, GPIC were one of the sponsors uh, supporting Adam in doing so. Why? Because we felt that he has put in a simple language, in a very uh, elegant way, uh, issues and principles that children should follow around the world in order to be successful, in order to be respectful, in order to love their country, in order to love their family. There are n numerous uh, lessons that can be learned from this book. 